I'm Isabella Simerson, and I'm here to welcome you to Tech Tuesday at 2 at the Edmund Lowe Creative Studios. Both this event and this space are designed to encourage students to experiment with some of the latest software and devices. We want to make these tools accessible to all OSU students and provide opportunities for students to develop proficiency and a comfort level with the kinds of technology they will need to be successful at OSU and beyond. Tech Tuesday at 2 will meet here in the Edmund Lowe Creative Studios on the first Tuesday of every school month for interactive showcases of emerging and innovative technologies. So far this semester, we've learned about GoPros and the basics of video editing. And today, we're going to switch gears a little bit and go with wearables for the win. We'll start our program with a brief a brief overview by Juliana Nickel Asian, one of our oral history librarians, followed by a discussion, a question and answer, and some time for our attendees to demo some of the wearables we have today. If you are watching on today's live stream, you can submit your questions via Twitter using the hashtag LibTech2s. Along the way, we'll be drawing for prizes, including today's grand prize, a Moto 360 smartwatch. If you are an OSU student, be sure to fill out a prize entry form. And now I'll turn it over to Juliana. How are we doing today? <laughs> All right. I will try to project. So if you can't hear me, let me know. So the plan for today includes a brief overview of wearable technology. And then we have some wearables for you to try out after our short talk, from Google Glass to Google Cardboard, Maya, which is a wearable mouse, uh, and we also have several smartwatches for you to explore and tinker with. But first, what comes to mind when you think of wearable technology? And for this, normally I'd have you shout it out, but I'm going to have you raise your hand so Isabella can capture it for O State TV. What comes to mind when you think of old school wearable technology? Old school, people. All the way in the back. <laughs> That's a long walk. Star Trek, Geordi's visor. OK, Geordi's visor. OK, so old school wearable technology. What else? Mr. Peters. A watch. A watch, a watch, absolutely. Any others? OK, so you know, I always think of you know, the Casio watch with the cool calculator. You ever play with those? I think that was a cool piece of old school wearable technology. What about headphones, right? We wear headphones all the time. They may not be smart, but that's wearable technology we've probably interacted with at some point. You ever play laser tag, right? I always think of those laser tag receivers. You're wearing it on your person and shooting that, that laser gun at it. That's wearable technology. Of course, if I say Walkmans, some people in the room will know what I mean. <laughs> you know, the old thing that used to play music and later cassettes, and you would strap it to yourself and you could walk around and strut. That's what I think of when I when I think of old school wearable technology. But wearable technology has come a long, long way. <clears throat> and one thing is pretty clear. Manufacturers love you guys, those in the demographic of 16 to 24, because you want wearables. You want wearables. So thanks to smartphones and how much these units have changed our lives and have become integrated into our lives, wearables seem like the next step. They're poised to make our lives easier, more efficient, and even smarter. Now, they're not going to go to class for you, right? You got you to do that. But these wearables, not just the standard glasses and watches, but the industry has taken note and have thought about how wearables can impact niche markets as well from fashion to jewelry, pets to parents. So what exactly is wearable technology? Well, wearables are something that can be worn on your person. 
They are built using advanced technologies, often include sensors, and can connect wireless, wirelessly to other devices, such as your smartphone. Wearables have to do something else, okay? And this is what, what makes them smart, right? It ha has to be go, go beyond owning that pair of headphones. That headphone has to respond when you swipe to go to the next song. Maybe if you tap it, it purchases it. So it has to respond to your behavior. Additionally, wearables help us tap into the notion of our connected self. We have so many different pieces of technology that we integrate with and we interact with every day. You may use a pedometer. You may use another device to measure how many calories you intake every day. You may wear a smartwatch. And so all of these items go into the notion of the connected self. And at the heart of wearables is this. Any ideas? I'll just tell you. It's data, big data. All of these wearables are collecting data. Yes, this data helps us know how many steps we take every day and our goals in terms of our fitness. But also companies realize that this data is important because what could they do? They could cater new services to you. Of course, it also brings up privacy and security and manufacturers know this. So let's talk about the wearables landscape. And let me tell you, we're only going to scratch the surface today. There are a ton on the market, but we're going to take just a quick walk through a lot of the wearables that are on the market today that you too can own. I think the one wearable that we have the most interaction with revolves around health and fitness. Fitbits, any Fitbit owners in the house? Oh yeah. So what do you like about your Fitbit? What does it do for you? Shout it out. Let you see how lazy you were. <laughs> Maybe that Fitbit motivates you once you see that data. But, but for the most part, the health and fitness sector has really taken off when it comes to wearables, from Garmin to um, Microsoft to Jawbone, you name it, companies are producing wearables, OK? So a wearable in terms of fitness and, and, and health, they're measuring your biometrics, your heart rate, exercise, or lack thereof, right? And industry has taken notice, and it's actually taken a step further. USA Today has reported that 2015 is the year of wearables for healthcare. And basically, the industry has said, you know what, we're making these wearables for consumer use, but maybe we could, we could take it up a notch and we could cater to patients. Uh, and send directly this healthcare information to doctors. So now you're really in trouble. So this is a growing area of the market. Oh, watches, watches. Smart watches in the house? We have a few, right? So smart watches are great because they're able to provide a snapshot of what's going on in our lives, primarily re related uh, to what's happening on your smartphone and send you updates. But it could do other stuff as well because I could say play 80s music and really any minute now <laughs> it's thinking about it. Maybe if I get closer to my phone and now Bobby Brown is playing My Prerogative for everybody who loves 80s music. But you can do all kinds of things. Um, you know, 
Samsung, Sony, Motorola, LG, they've all been in the smartwatch business for some time. And in April, Apple released the Apple Watch, helping to further grow the watch market. Smart watches are worn just like a regular watch, only they're paired with your smartphone. Some also record fitness data, such as steps and calories burned, exercise and heart rate, but you could, you could take it a step further. You could get directions, play music, get your to-do lists. I could sync my meeting notes all on my smartwatch. Another type of wearable, the head-mounted display. Oh, yes. Is it a fad? I don't know. They're not making them right now in mass production. But Google Glass is an example of a head-mounted display. So right now I could say, OK, Glass, take a picture. And I've just taken a picture of all of you, which is fun, but also a little, a little scary with uh, <laughs> not that y'all look great. I just, I'm just saying. <laughs> Glass started. Uh, with a prototype in 2013, and these prototype units were later made available to the public in May 2014. Google announced production would stop on the prototype units, but remained, and they still are committed to the product. So, you know, Google Glass, it's kind of cumbersome. You probably wouldn't know I'm wearing a smartwatch, but you'd know if I'm walking down the street with Google Glass, right? And I think when they were first launched, it kind of had a negative stigma as well, right? But the technology is great with them because you can search the internet, you can get directions, you can take pictures. You could even, you could record video. And so I'm gonna play a short video I recorded maybe a year and a half ago with Google Glass. Now you know where my office is, second floor, if you need any help after today's session. There's another type of head-mounted display, um, different than Google Glass. Other companies are also developing virtual reality units. Most notably, we have Oculus Rift, which is a virtual reality headset, which is really aimed at a consumer audience. Uh, and of course, if you want to explore virtual reality on the cheap, you can, oh, there we go. I'll just point to Tabitha. You can purchase Google Cardboard, right? So Google Cardboard is kind of dubbed the best wearable you're not wearing. Um, and it's actually 
technology that's been around for a while. Uh, cardboard uses a stereoscopic viewer, which creates the illusion of three dimensions using two images viewed through a special magnifier. You just download special apps for your phone. You could use both your iPhone, iOS, or Android, and you could really, you're, you're in this really cool virtual world. So it's, it's the best wearable you're not wearing. And after today's session, you could, you could play around with Google Cardboard. Clothing, what we're wearing every day. They're making it smart. Who would have thought it? Smart clothing is on the rise. Most recently, Google and Levi's, the folks who make jeans, have teamed up to create digitally connected clothing. They're working on fabric that can sense touch gestures and can basically turn normal clothes into an interactive device. So you could touch your pants and you could control what's happening on your smart device. Watch out, big brother. No inappropriate touch. Um, I have, no, sorry. <laughs> so you could, you could connect to apps, services, or phone features. Others involved in clothing production include uh, Ralph Lauren, who's they've created a smart shirt to track distance, calories burned, heart rate, stress rate, and intensity of movement. DigiSoul Digi is a new startup, uh, and they make smart soles for your shoes, and they warm your feet, controlled with your phone. It's unbelievable. Running shoes, running socks, dresses, maternity clothing, they're all being developed for the wearable market. Jewelry, ladies. Who doesn't love jewelry, right? So wearables are starting to cater to niche markets, including fans of jewelry, from wearable cuffs to rings, pendants to necklaces. Tech companies are starting to enter the market in full force, adding utility beyond accessorizing, combining style with smart technology. And a great example of this is Ringly, what you see on your screen. And Ringly, what happens is it's tied into your phone via Bluetooth. So whenever you get a text message, a phone call, an email, Ringly will vibrate or change color. So you know. So Ringly. And you know, they look good. They're really, they're really catering this design uh, to a specific clientele. They're really aiming at, at these niche markets. And I think this is something to watch. So watch out for wearable jewelry. Headphones, OK, so there are headphones out there on the market that are super cool and give you awesome sound, right? But do they capture your biometric data? So now we're starting to see manufacturers like Braggy really taking advantage of this. And I know that these look really big on your screen, but these are earbuds. These are earbuds. And they can measure uh, all kinds of things, including um, your biometric data. It lets you, of course, listen to music, answer phone calls with your earbuds. That's pretty neat. Um, many are being developed because your uh, your, your Fitbits do an okay job, but when you start taking your temperature and measuring your data via your ears, you're getting a better reading. So expect wearable headphones to really take off as well. Now, of course, we can't forget about the kiddos, right? A lot of wearables, they're trying to gamify them for kids. And so you see a lot of wearables being developed for um, kids who take insulin to encourage them to take their insulin and monitor their, their glucose levels. You're also seeing um, wearables developed for kids to get them active, right? Because so often they just want to 
like us sit there and stare at a phone or a tablet, but they're, they're encouraging wearables that will make kids active. Of course, there's also trackers like this one. So you give a kid a nice bright colored watch looking thing and parents can track their kids via GPS. So you know when they're at school, you know when they're at play, you know when they're roaming around the neighborhood. Some of us could probably use these as well. And it's uh, programmed with five phone numbers and those are the only five numbers they could call and you could text. So it's a real genius idea. Um, very interesting. Pets. We love pets, right? Who doesn't love pets? The pet market is also exploding. So you ever wonder where your dogs or cats go? I have no idea. But you know they roam and they're doing interesting things, not only in your house, but around the neighborhood. Well, guess what? Now you can monitor their movements via GPS. <laughs> I don't know if you want to, but you can. Um, and you could also start monitoring a lot of their biometrics as well. So trackers, GPS collars, activity monitors. So if you know Fido needs to go on a, a run after school, you could do that. Multicolored lights built into um, their collars to help prevent uh, accidents as well, keep you safe from collisions. So there's a lot of wearables. Oh, cows as well. So, you know, you think of the ag industry, right? So you can measure biometrics on your livestock. It's amazing. It's great. So you could get the smartphone notification if, if Bessie, you know, is having trouble. I bet it does. <laughs> Go get Bessie. She needs some hay. So <laughs> where do you think the future of wearable technology is headed? Where do you think it's headed? I'm waiting for my implant. You're waiting for your implant? You are? I am. I don't want to carry water anymore. Yeah, implantables. Implantables are on the scene. So when we think of the future of wearable technologies, you're, you're going to think implants. Implants. Can you imagine checking out your library book up front and just scanning your tattoo barcode? Or having your cell phone, your smartphone on your arm, and you just touch your arm, right? So Shannon? We, we do, yeah, absolutely. So improving hearing technology. So uh, implants are on the rise. Of course, we see this in pets as well, right? We microchip our pets, right? Um, so think of, for humans, more um, tattoos, right? Barcode scanners on your arms. Uh, think of implants that help with um, providing medical information to your doctor. So cyber implants to monitor and treat diseases in real time. Cyber pills that talk to your doctor. There's really a whole bunch of potential when it comes to wearables. So that's my spiel. I'm going to turn it over for, to Isabella because she has a few things to say and then Remember, after we do the drawing, we're going to have at these circular tables set up, one will be watches, one will be Google Glass, one will be Mayo, the wearable mouse, which is really neat if you've never seen it, and one will be Google Cardboard. But first, I'm going to turn it over to Isabella. Okay, thank you for listening to Juliana's little speech. So if you want to know more about any of our tech-related topics, I encourage you to visit with any of our event staff here in the Edmund Lowe Creative Studios, or you can check out one of our logins for lynda.com, which offers thousands of online training videos for a number of tech-related topics. Our next Tech Tuesday at 2 event will be February 2nd, when we'll present In the Door with InDesign, so participants will receive an orientation to Adobe's powerful page layout software 
And as always, we'll have some great tech-related prizes. Um, so at this time, we're going to draw for our grand prize. Okay, so our grand prize is the Moto 360 watch with syncs with your smartphone and it's compatible with both Apple and Android. So, I'm going to butcher this. Amrutha Sondavara. Sorry. <laughs> Amrutha. No. No. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Marcus Gabalori. Yes. <laughs> okay. Okay. I have a I have a special announcement. So so Marcus, yeah he he's very hip with the the wearable technology and and he wants you to draw again for the smartwatch. Okay. Thank you. Peyton Hillary. Peyton. <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, Tatiana Chapman. Tatiana, yay! Awesome. Okay, um, Sam Stuckelberg. Stuckenberg. It's okay. Carrie Waite. And Hannah Littlefield. So there's lots more chances to win at other Tech Tuesday at two events in the spring. And in the spring, we'll be presenting a total of $600 for our new Library Creativity Award. So you can visit our website or ask any of these staff here today if you'd like to know more. And if you have any suggestions for future Tech Tuesday topics, please send them to us via Twitter with the hashtag libtech 2 um, thank you to our friends at O-State TV for hosting today's live stream, and goodbye to everyone who was online with us today. And now we're going to get on to the hands-on demonstration. <laughs> <laughs>